What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the Jersey to Vegas podcast, episode number 89. We are here. We are back in a new look, of course, right? I made a actually a Patreon video specifically for Patreon people uh, to kind of show you everything in, in the back end of, of what's happening here on the show. At the same time, how difficult it is to, to get this going, um, to provide this content that kind of um, comes out. But if you haven't known and or... Um, do not know. I have this. Uh, uh, I have a boot due to a fractured metatarsals. Um, nothing is uh, misaligned or you know, all over the place. It seems like a pretty clean fracture, um, but it does hurt. It's probably the most nagging one I've had in a long time. Like I've had the same foot. I've had an Achilles, not a rupture, but I've had an Achilles tear. So it wasn't fully torn. It's a partial tear, which was kind of annoying and swollen and black and blue. But um, it's not as annoying as this one now because I have to put I put a lot of pressure onto it. And it's pretty much at the front of the foot. And um, the reason I'm holding it this week is because the arm, this fucking thing right here, this stupid piece of garbage i'm gonna throw i keep saying oh maybe i'll use it maybe i'll use it for another episode it'll be okay i'm gonna break it i can't wait to blow it up with a fucking m80 i don't have any m80s though so i'm just gonna use gunpowder um so i have to hold it this week because that stupid thing went down but the metal tarsals are like so it hurts to flex the foot so if this is your foot to do that is flex this is dorsiflexion so point your toes away you know, people have orgasms, they point their toes out, and go, that's dorsiflexion, and then the other one is like, Ugh! the other way, I don't know if you guys do that, maybe it's just me, I do this, I snap my toes, when I, all right, anyway, too much information, um, so at that curve, I can't hold, I can't show you, there, is where it hurts the most, um, so whenever I put pressure on it, especially waking up in the morning, I have to, and Phoenix has been like, sick so uh, for you guys that don't know phoenix phoenix is my son he's been sick and coming to our room a lot and he you know has a nagging cough or he has to he needs some water and for me to get up it's very hard so even this morning he was coughing and needed water and he was just like stirring this was like three in the morning people and he just didn't want to go to sleep again or fall back asleep so my water's across the way right here i had to fall off this bed Make sure the foot is up in the air and I'm literally on my knees crawling to the water to get the water, bring it back, and then I had to bring it to him. And, you know, at least he met me halfway. I did have to wake him up, though. So it's kind of a challenge. At the same time, being the only driver in the house is a challenge. So getting in and out of cars, walking the dogs is a challenge. It's pretty difficult, right, to to do this stuff. But I do know it's my own as well. Not that my wife cannot do anything, but I am very stubborn in allowing her to help me, just like everyone else, right? And I put up, it's weird because I think I jinxed myself. My friend, Sean Cece, who's also a, a Patreon, thank you, Sean, Shawnee, um, she sent me a video of me walking the dogs on crutches back in Nutley, or actually Bloomfield, because that's where she lived, and I was walking the dogs, and I was like, man... What a dick. <laughs> what an ego. What an ego you had to like have to fucking man up and just do things yourself instead of asking for help. I'm doing it again. I'm doing it now. Right? I see that video and I understand it now that I'm being an idiot. But it's very hard. Guys, it's very difficult. You know, that's what I want to talk about today is really the 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 impact that injuries have on your mental health or your mental well-being, right? And for me, it drives me crazy because I'm always injured, always. And I'm not even doing anything wrong. That's a, that's a bad thing. I wish I was doing things wrong. I wish I was running whatever athlons you want to call athlons because there's a thousand of them, right? I don't know which one it's specifically, but I'm sure even if I did a, a train for a 5K, I'm going to get hurt. Right, and I don't know if it has anything to do with what we talked about last time, whether it's going to be rheumatoid arthritis or just tons of arthritis. I don't know, but it's frustrating. And what's even more frustrating is that my ego can't allow people to help me. You know how hard it is? It's so hard. I actually had a conversation with my wife yesterday, or maybe two days ago, and I told her the truth. 
She's like, why are you so angry? I was like, because I, because I think, I think that what you're saying about me in your head is that Pete is a lazy piece of shit. All he does is lay down and sit down, which I don't. That I'm afraid she's going to. Pete's lazy. He doesn't do anything in this house. What a fucking asshole. Like, where did that, that, where did that stem from? Yeah, I, I don't know. You know, and that's for me to look deeper into. But I do know that that's the initial thought. Like, I feel like my wife is fucking looking at me in disgust because I broke my foot. Does that even make sense? It doesn't, right? It doesn't. But to me, it does. To me, it makes tons and tons and tons of sense. I had to make sure that I was recording this because if not, I was going to punch my own dick. I was going to take my own dick and punch it, which does not take much effort. But... I think I do it every once in a while anyway, so, yeah, whatever. A little sexual episode going on here. But anyway, that's what I, I think, and it's hard for me to let go of that that person, right? He can do things on his own. He can do things. Pete doesn't need help. I don't need anyone's help. And I still don't like people's help, right? It's weird. But I've been recently allowing people to help me, especially financially. Like, yeah, well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your donation. Thank you for your help. Thank you for this. Thank you for that. I completely appreciate it. I take more compliments outside instead of being, nah, go fuck it. No, I take it. This one's a hard one. Asking for help in your daily routine and things that you do every day, where you're required to be the man, right? The man of the house. I do everything. I do a lot. I don't do everything. It's wrong to say I don't do everything. It's not. That was a lie. I do a lot, though, especially the physical end. And for me to for me to not be able to do that properly really bothers me. You know, because there's there's things like here's a perfect example this morning. Perfect example was this morning. Let me check the time. Good. Perfect example was this morning. I couldn't walk. So Otis always for some reason barks at like four thirty, five o'clock in the morning. I had to run out the door and shut the fuck up, even though I'm awake. Right. I've been up since three thirty now. It doesn't matter. Right, but he still barks. Because I leave him inside his crate until it's time to go. And for some reason, I just couldn't walk. And for me to hold him and for him just to pee was going to be a challenge this morning. So for some reason, he actually barked and then he stayed in his crate. Like he didn't bother me. I opened it. He didn't come out and say hi to me. I think he was just pissed off at me. He was like, fuck you, dick and dick. And then I just left him. I left him, Daisy. They both stayed, Dev and Pete, so uh, the kids woke up a little later, so it was a little bit of a rush cooking breakfast, getting them ready for, for school, getting their bags ready, their lunches ready, and then after that, we take them to school, and I was like, I'm going to bring the dogs to the park, so they're inside the back as well, which Phoenix hates, Phoenix hates when the dogs are in the back, because Otis just breathes on him the entire time. If you guys don't know who Otis is, he's a great Pyrenees bloodhound mix, he's a super cute Super adorable, but he thinks he's five pounds when he's 100, you know, so it's a tough one. And then he slobbers on him before school. Phoenix hates it. But after we dropped the kids off, we went to the dog park where I was just going to, oh, I want to hold Otis so he can just poop where he normally poops outside near the parking, the parking lot. Not technically into the dog park because I don't like the dog park. I'm very, I'm super anxious about dog parks. Because Otis took a dog out. Like, I was good for a while. Then Otis took a dog out. Otis took a girl out. Like, he took people out just from running. And he's just, like, so doofy. He's two years old. Now he's three. Three years old. He's just, he's big. But he doesn't know. And then people aren't paying attention because they're like, hey, then this is what happened. And then I went to church. And then in church, the pastor said, and then Otis takes her knees out. And then she's like, oh, my knee, my surgeon pops their knees. One dog's laying down. Their ribs are broken because Otis is playing with them. So now I feel bad bringing Otis to the dog park, even though I shouldn't, right? It's on them too. Like when a dog runs by me, I bend down and I squat because I know they're going to hit my knees. But if I'm not paying attention, Otis has definitely almost taken my knee out at least a thousand times. So I understand where they're coming from. And anyway, I just wanted to take him to just poop and they just poop. And of course, who did I want to grab? Otis. Because Nat doesn't like walking Otis sometimes because he's too strong. Not that he pulls, but there's times he's scared that he's, she's going to pull him or she, he's going to pull her. 
you know, but he pulled me a little bit and then I jarred and I had to take a big step and I stepped on my foot and it fucking hurt. Then I was like breathing, taking deep breaths, just fighting through it. And then he did it again. And I was like, motherfucker. And this is me, right? I could have, what could I have done differently? Like, what could I have done differently? You know what it was? Handing off Otis to Natalie. Regardless on how much I feel, felt like I was protecting her from Otis's pulling. Right? But no, my ego and my OCD is used to handling two dogs. Is used to doing this. And now I can't. So for me, I think it's just a hard, right? I couldn't just want to let go of this fact that this is not part of what I'm doing right now. Right now. It's not forever. It's so crazy. But it's just right now. Because I don't want to change the routine. Right? I make breakfast. I do that. It's my routine. This is what I'm this is my flow. This is where I'm at. This is where I'm my best. And for you to take away little inserts of my best makes me feel insignificant. Now that is all ego. And I don't want to say ego, because you know, there's so many different definitions of an ego, like but you know, it's just you. Just that you know, you understand what I'm saying. And it's a difficult thing to let go of. So Natalie takes him. I'm like, you know what? Just take him. Take him. Take him to the dog park. And I'll get in the car and I'll bring Daisy and I'll drive Daisy over to the actual dog park. Because I can't walk. I couldn't walk there. I had no crutches. It's my own fault. So I get to the dog park. Super anxious. Super anxious. They're already walking in. I'm like, oh my God. Someone's going to say something about our dog. Daisy's going to pull me. Daisy starts pulling me a little bit. I was like, bitch, you better stop fucking pulling me. And all of a sudden she stopped. And she started again. I was like, and then she stopped. So then I finally let her in. They play, they play, they play. Anxiety coming true. Otis is playing. He's very good, but sometimes, you know, he's big. And he doesn't know how to stop. So there's two ladies in the front talking about fucking cooking recipes. That's sexist, by the way. I don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Maybe they're talking about their Wall Street jobs. That's not right, because they live in Vegas. There's no Wall Street jobs here. And then Otis whips by her dog. And she's like, oh my god, that's like a horse. <laughs> He's so big. <laughs> he almost took my knees out. <laughs> Guess what happened to me when I heard that? And I was like on the other side of the park, but fucking Superman hearing it. And that's what I heard. And I was like, oh shit. He's going to take her knees out. So he's running around again. <laughs> Shoo, slides by her again. Whoa, whoa, look at this dog. This dog's part man. <laughs> Shut up, biznatch. And then her dog was there and started, like, kind of getting snippy with Otis. But Otis was, like, falling down. You know, like, you know, you know, all, you know dogs just give up and play. Like, he was just giving up. They get out of here. And then she started going. Then he started, she started chasing him. So he started chasing him. Then you could tell she was getting worried. Right, so with her getting worried, I started getting worried. And I was like, I get, me, get me the fuck out of this dog park. Get me the fuck out of this dog park. He already took a shit. We don't need to be here anymore. He shit. She shit. We picked it up. Daisy shit three times. We picked up two. The third one, she was too far. And Natalie didn't notice. But I wasn't going to say anything. But no one was watching. I always pick up dog shit. It must have been a little remnant or like a drop of something. It was her third shit today on in that, in that moment in the park. But Otis... Was running around, and of course, another person, and they start talking about how big he is, and it's great, perfect. I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to talk to anybody. I want to go home. I fucking have a cast on. I don't want to have to talk to you about the air cast. I don't want to have to explain the situation. What happened to your foot? <laughs> That's what they say. That's what it sounds like to me when someone's like, what happened to your foot? I go, I was breakdancing. I was break dancing, and guess what I did? I broke my foot break dancing. Anyway, I could have easily gotten rid of all that first part where I might have re injured my foot, right? I might have got hurt more if I just let Natalie take Otis, or if we just went to the dog park in the beginning. But for me, there's so much resistance. There's so much resistance for me to change that routine that it's so scary. And I'm sure you guys can can relate in this, that there's something or some things in your life that are so routine, that are so part of you, 
that it's hard to let go. But you, you gotta, right? I, I gotta let it go. And when I did, my worst nightmares came true about what happens at a dog park. But did it kill me? No. Did it break my foot? No. Did I end up talking to someone? No. I have that social anxiety, right? I don't like talking to new people. It's tough. It's awkward for me. I just make awkward jokes for them to laugh, and then maybe we'll talk, right? That's so uncomfortable. I'm good at it, but I'm not good at it. But even more so, that anxiety, nothing happened to me. I'm still alive. I'm not dead, right? And that's where I get lost. That's where we get stuck. We get stuck in this moment that we think this is going to be the worst thing ever in our life. And it almost solidified it because I started... You know, I'm I'm thinking about everything that I'm fearing, and it's happening right in front of me. The last thing I needed was the dog to die, and then the lady to be in a stretcher going into the ambulance. That that's all that would solidify everything. But would I have died? No. It's just that fear of making sure no one says anything, the fear of pleasing people, the fear of making sure we don't get in trouble, things like that. And I have a lot of that fear. I have a lot of that anxiety. And it all could have just been done with by just Natalie taking over the job. Because it's not my time right now. And it's very difficult to accept. But I'm accepting. And learning to accept a lot more. Because I got a long time in this bad boy. got a long time in this. So... What I did was I looked up some stuff about injuries. We got to take a break? Nah. So I asked, how do injuries plague your mental health? Guys, this is not coming from me. This is coming from the internet. So, so reliable. Injuries can have significant impact on the person's mental health. Here are some ways injuries can affect mental health. Number one, pain and discomfort. No shit. Number two, loss of mobility and independence. Number three, fear and anxiety. Number four, social isolation. Number five, financial stress. And they're all explained, and I'll explain them one at a time later. It's important to take care of both your physical and mental health after an injury. Seeking medical treatment, practice self-care, staying connected in loved ones, and seeking support from mental health professionals can also help alleviate the mental health impact of an injury. Hmm, interesting. Maybe I'll call my therapist. Maybe it's time. You know, it's been a little while. You know, I've been feeling good, but I think now is a good time to maybe talk about it. And I feel like I'm feeling better talking to you guys about it. So let's talk about number one. Uh, check on time. Two minutes. Okay. I got to pick up Sage. Pain and discomfort. This is number one. Injuries can cause physical pain and discomfort, which can lead to an emotional distress and mood changes. Chronic pain can also lead to depression, anxiety, and stress. Lead to emotional distress and mood changes. Pain. I am so aggravated because when I take steps, or like I try to bend my foot right now, even though I shouldn't, I try to bend it, I can feel it's tight and it's painful. You know what it's doing? It's reinforcing the thought that I'm not going to be well soon. And that's what annoys me. That's the discomfort. Discomfort of not being able to take a step with this big fat foot is very annoying. Because when I wake up in the morning and I want to take a piss, you know I want to piss? On the floor. Because I don't want to have to walk to the bathroom because it hurts so much. Instead I have to hold it in all the time. So yeah, I can understand why it's painful and distressing and uh, depressing, to be honest. And if you're in chronic pain, I got like I talked about my friend, chronic pain, lower back, hips, knees, it's annoying. Because it limits you from doing things that you want. And I think that's number two. Loss of mobility and independence. Injuries can limit a person's mobility and independence, which can lead to feelings of helplessness, frustration, and sadness. Zuzu Zanza. I think I just talked about that. Helplessness. I feel You feel helpless at times. But you want to do everything. Right? You feel sad because you're not doing everything that you want. And that's a normal feeling. So if you are injured or going through injury but not doing anything about it, you may fall into a depression. You may fall into sadness. You may fall into anger probably really fast. Because it does have emotional distress. Not being able to do things that you want. And I think that's what we mean by mobility. Not being able to be as mobile as you are in life. 
right? Makes you fucking tough. And then you have to rely on people. Perfect example this morning. I had to rely on Nat to walk the dogs. Even though I don't want her to. Like, I don't want her to have to do that stuff. I want to do it. But I can't. But does that mean it's going to be forever? No. And that's where the healing begins. Right? Really understanding that this is not going to be forever. This is not forever. I think that's the perfect word to put there. And it's going to end at some point. And you'll be back doing what it is you love doing. Now I'm going to take a quick break. Because I have to walk over there and take a piss. It's really far. And it'll at least take 15 minutes. So I decide to not take a pee-pee and just stay here. So I had to take a quick break for no reason. But let's move on to number three. Because I do still have to pick up my daughter. Fear and anxiety. Injuries can create fear and anxiety, especially if they are severe or life-threatening. Fear of re-injuries can also lead to anxiety and avoidance of certain activities. I'm sure we've all been there. Now, whether it's a life-threatening injury, I, I do apologize, and I, I'm sorry that you had to go through that because that's very tough. You know, it's like imagine being in an accident, and, you know, just it was a very severe accident. And, you know, I, I cannot say I can relate, you know, because that's very... Um, detrimental, not the word, not the word I'm looking for. That's very, that's tough. It's very tough to deal with, right? But I can deal with, I can, I can relate to the fear of doing it again, right? Right now I'm walking, thinking I'm going to do this again. You know, I already bought another leg brace. I bought my own crutches because I wanted good ones because I'm back then, I'm afraid it's going to happen again. So now I'm like, do I do that? Do I do jujitsu again? By the way, I did it in jujitsu. If you guys don't know that, I probably didn't even tell you. It's okay, not worth. It. I'll tell you later. And I'm afraid. Is it worth going back? I just I've been on a roll with working out. I've been on a roll. I finished my whole cycle. I was so excited. I finished my whole workout cycle from uh, strength and conditioning, and it's been going really well. I've been in, actually looking forward to training. And of course, this happens. And then it's like, shit, should I? You know, I did it. I did box jumps the other day, uh, not too high. Um, I did squats and it felt good. And then it actually was the same day, which is probably the accumulation of it. It probably hurt or broke because I was doing box jumps, then squatting. Then I went to jitsu. Like, it all makes sense. I get it. You know, some things just don't happen. There's always a, a, a build-up to it. The reason your shoulder pops is not because your shoulder popped during that time. Unless it was traumatic, it was probably because there was not mobile enough, right? You had tightness, stiffness that you did not recognize because you're so used to it, and then it popped. Same thing with my knee. Like, I know my calves are tight and my quads were tight, and it just felt weird and my hip is tight. And guess what happens? ACL tear. Like, you're just not... There's other reasons in in working out why it happens versus like, okay, my arm just broke because a guy kicked it. You know, it's like, a, you know, a little different. Or my head split open because an elbow went down into it. That's different. That's a pretty, pretty traumatic injury and blunt injury, right? Versus something that's um, accumulated, you would say. But we got to get over that. And we have to learn how to work around it and not be afraid that it's not going to happen again. And I'm talking to myself because obviously I'm going to train again because that's what keeps me motivated to heal that's what keeps me motivated to do better, right, is to be able to do it again. And I'm really looking forward to it, but there's a lot of times where I rethink it. And most of the time, all that shit's in our head. Just like all the, all the time it's in our head. It's just a thought. I mean, I let that go. Number four, social isolation. Injuries make it difficult to participate in social activities, which can lead to feelings of isolation. Yeah, like I can't go to practice now. Perfect example, I went to practice yesterday just to watch. But the thing is... I feel like I've been going to practice to watch all the time, right? Because my shoulder was hurt. I threw out my lower back a thousand times taking bread out of the oven. Or my neck is kinked up for no fucking reason. Or this is super stiff because I got nothing. I did nothing. And my knee is torn because of X, Y, Z. It makes you... I don't want to go because I don't have to explain. Right? I don't want to sit there and be the guy that's on the side. But I want to learn, too. Like, I love going there because my teacher's really good. And I just want to learn. I'm not there to fucking 
talk to you people. <laughs> that's not wrong. That's wrong to say that I talk to you people. That's my team, right? It's my it's the people that I'm friends with. Um, I don't mean to say that, but I don't want to explain what happened. And then I feel, and then I, of course it's this is what I feel they're saying is what a piece of shit can't work through it. Such a pussy. Like those are the things that go through my head, even though none of them are probably saying it. Most of them are very empathetic and they understand. And they did. A lot of people are like, oh man, hated that boot. I was in that thing for six to eight weeks on my ankle. They like they told me their stories. You know, but I, I would rather isolate myself at times because I don't want to be seen. I don't want people to see me that way or this way. But at the same time, I don't let it bother me because I do want to learn. And I do want to get better. And that's it. And I'm sure I'm going to pop it again. <laughs> See, I already said it. Fucking asshole. What a dick. Number five, financial distress. Can't relate. Don't have a job. So, hey ho, watch out now. Let's cross that off the list, huh? Financial stress. Injuries can lead to medical expenses, loss of income. I don't have insurance. Hey. Which means that's all the money's gone. Loss of income and other financial stressors, which can add to a person's exact. Absolutely. I'm sure the bills add up, right? If you don't have insurance like I do right now, um, the bills are going to add up. It's going to fucking, it's not going to be fun, right? But it's going to cause you some stress or even just thinking about the bills coming in. You know, like I think I had my hip surgery a long time ago. I don't think I paid the bill. They kind of just keep sending me red letters. Anyone else get those red letters? Because I do. Because they're looking for me because I got to pay more bills. But I ain't paying for it. It's too much. They'll find a way to make that money. I'm sure they have it. It's somewhere inside their banks or the doctor's banks or the company's banks or the insurance agency's banks. You know who doesn't have it? I don't, and I'm not going to give it to you. So keep sending those red letters, but I haven't given my new address yet, so hopefully you can't find me, and I'm still here. But if you listen to the podcast, hey, thanks for listening to the podcast, uh, Debt Collectors, and um, I live in Colorado. So that's it. Welcome to the Jersey to Colorado show. Welcome. Is that the name of the show? Oh, yeah, Jersey, Colorado. That's it. Cool. So that's the financial side of things. I couldn't really relate to that part because... No, you know what? See? This is me not liking... This is me right now. Not accepting that I have to talk about money sometimes. Whoa. Isn't that a fucking kicker? I went through that, I went through that whole thing because I don't want to talk about money. Whoa, mind-blowing. If you guys don't understand what's happening right now, it's called a revelation, 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 raves, revelation, whatever. Wow, which can add to a person's anxiety and stress. It's funny how I just joke about something that's super serious, right? Like paying your medical bills is pretty important. Or having the money to be able to go to the doctor. To be able to go get an x-ray. To be able to go get the equipment for it. And I remember when I bought the boot, the ankle brace or the ankle stabilizer, and then I bought the crutches, I felt like Nat was calling me a piece of shit for spending money. That's what I felt. I felt like she was judging me for using the money that we need on my foot because I'm a dick. That's what I think. And that's what I believe. And that's what's tough. And, you know, the harder part is that I express it to her. And I tell her that. Like, the reason I'm upset right now is because the reason I'm maybe standoffish is because this is what I believe is happening. And I tell her this stuff, and she's like, are you fucking crazy? And I was like, yeah, I am, actually, uh, certifiably, certifiably. But it's not true. And think about, I want you guys to think about the things that you do to yourselves in your head that you talk about, that you think that other people, and I always say, I don't care what other people think. I fucking don't care what other people think. I do what I want. I do what I want. I'm an individual, independent person. I don't know where these voices came from. But a lot of things that you do, you actually do care, right? Obviously, because you're thinking about what other people think, which is creating your anxiety. Like, oh, I, I, you know, I put a comment up. I got to take it down. Because it might be the wrong thing to say, right? I think I've done it thousands of times. Right? What else? Uh, I've made videos where I'm like, oh, 
that's going to hurt someone's feelings. Let me take that down. Weird. Weird. When there's honesty, truth, and sometimes just genuine, that's just genuinely what you think. But we have that fear of doing so, and I definitely have that fear, a lot of being looked at as lazy. I don't think I've ever been lazy my entire life. Even when I was fat, I wasn't lazy. <laughs> Even when I was fat, I just ate too much. Like, I still moved around, I played sports, did work. Even when I was fat, I wasn't lazy. Maybe that's why. What am I afraid of? But I guess we have our own things to figure out. And if you're injured or going through an injury or scared of getting an injury, like, this is going to happen. You know, don't feel bad if you, if you do. But the main thing that we have to do is find out how to make it better. Right? How to make it work. How do I make what's happening with me work? Because I have so many other fears right now about what this thing's stopping me from doing. My number one is I'm going to get fat. Right? How is this inflammation going to Like, there's so much. It's like, that's my, that's the, that's the way my brain works, people. Like, how am I, how, how am I not going to get fat now? That's how crazy it is. Not like, hey, when are you going to walk in? It's like, no, stop eating carbs. <laughs> What's the protocol you're going to use from Monday through Friday? Oh, you're going to fast? Okay, intermittent fasting. Here we go. Protein only. Drink olive oil. Drink water. Go to sleep. That's what I'm going to do for the rest, the rest of the fucking term of being inside this cast. But that's what we have to think about. Right? We have to understand that these things do happen. And it's not the end of the world. Even though we feel like it. You know, it's not the end of the world. Even though we feel like it. And allow people to help you. Like allow them to do whatever it is they want to do. To help you. And what's hard here is that I don't have any help. The only person that can help me is Nat. And thank God she's here. Otherwise, well, I don't know what the fuck I do. Right? Think about it that way, Pete. Imagine what I have to do. I'm not sure. But thank you guys for coming out to episode 89 of the Jersey to Vegas podcast. If you can, go to patreon.com slash Jersey to Vegas and drop a donation to help the channel out. I'm going to fix that whole thing up because um, because I am. That's all. But thank you guys always from always helping, always being here, and always listening. All right, I'll see you guys later. I have no slogans. I wish I did. Jersey to Colorado. Peace out, guys.